India, a subcontinent with a long history, a land of legend, fantasy and reality, an encounter with an amazing fairy tale world. A country that extends from the Himalayas in the north to the semi-desert terrain and tropics of the south. A country of incredible contrasts and full of fascinating splendor. Delhi, the political and administrative capital of India and the largest democracy in the world. A melting pot of both culture and religion. A constantly expanding metropolis built on the site of 12 former cities and center of power for almost a thousand years. Jama Masjid, the Friday Mosque, is one of Old Delhi's main landmarks, bequeathed to the city by the Mughal King Shah Jahan. Close to the mosque is the bazaar district of Chani Chowk, a busy commercial area. A journey by bicycle rickshaw is a great way to get around the city, a real adventure in these hectic streets. Within a well-arranged park encircled by a wall is Raj Ghat, a memorial to the country's former political leaders. Gurdwara Bangla Sab is the city's largest Sikh temple. Sikhs believe in one God and the doctrines of ten gurus. In a community kitchen, free food is provided to the faithful. The huge red sandstone fortress on the eastern banks of the Yamuna is one of the finest buildings of the former Mughal realm, the Red Fort. Shady arcades surround the large Connaught Circus, the circular city center from where all the main routes begin. Rajpats is the name of an impressive 300 meter wide road flanked by green swathes and luxuriant fountains. At the eastern end of the road is Indian Gate, a 42 meter high Roman style triumphal arch. The small park contains a futuristic looking observatory, the Janta Manta, created for the famous Maharaja Jai Singh of Jaipur. It's a small replica of a more splendid and still working observatory in his hometown. The old Purana Kila fort is situated on a small hill. In the early 16th century, it belonged to the Afghan monarch Sher Shah. On the southeastern edge of the huge metropolis of Delhi is the large tomb of the famous emperor Humayun. Construction of this fine mausoleum was due to the endeavors of the emperor's wife, Haji Begum. The architecturally spectacular Baha'i Temple was built in the shape of a white lotus blossom. It's a sanctuary for a religious community that was founded in 1863 by a Persian, Mirza Hussein Ali Nuri. Giyas Uddin Tugluk was the founder of Delhi's third city that is situated on the eastern periphery of today's sprawling metropolis. His amazingly well-preserved tomb exudes power and magnificence. Over six kilometers of walls once protected this huge fortified city, whose buildings have long since disappeared. 
Sadly, the founder of the city died before its construction was completed. The National Rail Museum contains an interesting collection of nostalgic locomotives, carriages and memorabilia. Indian Railway History The Savdar Zhang Mausoleum was built in the final years of Mughal rule, an architectural monument of this golden era. The ancestors of the mighty Mughals Genghis Khan and Timur Leng ruled here for more than 250 years. Today, the Lodi Gardens are the green lungs of Delhi. The monarchs of the Lodi dynasty had their tombs built here. On the southern periphery of Delhi is an architectural relic that dates back to the 12th century, the Kut Minar complex, birthplace of the Islamic epoch, and the first large mosque with a courtyard and royal tombs. Rajasthan, land of kings, one of the most unique and colorful provinces in northern India. Our journey begins in Jaipur, the pink city, where the buildings consist of the reddish stone of the surrounding landscape. The main landmark of the city, the Palace of the Winds, is a facade with vented bay windows, whence the women could observe the street unseen. And Jantar Manta is an observatory that Maharaja Jai Singh, who was crowned when only 12 years of age, had built next to his palace. On our journey to the nearby hills, we pass the pretty water castle of Jal Mahal. Prior to arriving at the original residence of the Rajput clan, that is situated amid adventurous stone scenery, the strategic amber fort was built into rock walls. Man Singh resided here as a contemporary of the Mughal Emperor Akbar long before his successor founded Jaipur. The influential principality was ruled from this splendid fortress for more than six centuries, a place of power and beauty. This is where the Maharaja lived with his favorite wives with adjoining sleeping areas and official rooms and natural ventilation and a spectacular view. Shekawati is the name of an area that lies along a former caravan route. In the 19th century, Sikar was one of the most prosperous trading posts in the region. But little remains of those colorful times. The prosperity of the former businessmen who traded goods between Lahore and Delhi is no longer apparent. Thirty kilometers to the north is Lakshmanga that was founded by Lakshman Singh, the Raja of Sika. Here, the local people profited from the caravan trains that flourished at that time. This is highlighted by a palace, a temple and fine buildings. Fatipur is located on a trading route further north and was built in the late 15th century. Today, nothing remains of the warlike incidents that once took place here. The British rule of India that began at the onset of the 19th century promoted peaceful trade and brought great wealth to several families.
This created the great trading houses of Shekhawati, the Havelis or the Isolated. They were similar to the Persian caravanserai, a two-story building with inner courtyard that served as a storage room and stable, the occupants residing on the second story. Outside the city gates is the desert. Jaisalma, the residence of the Bati princes on the edge of the Tar Desert, was also an important supply point for the caravans. The impressive fortress rises above the town. The lanes are flanked with splendid patrician houses with decorated sandstone facades, balconies and porches. The former wealth of this town is plain to see. The small artificial Gadsisa lake on the periphery of the town indicates the importance of water in this desert region. It is still used as a religious sanctuary. Today, the nearby desert is popular for tourist excursions. The Golden City embodies like no other the desert culture of a bygone age. Those days when camel caravans loaded with silk and spices arrived exhausted at this extreme outpost of civilization. Ajmer, India's most important place of pilgrimage for Muslims, features many historic buildings. 14 kilometers away is an important Hindu pilgrimage destination, Pushkar. An accumulation of whitewashed buildings and temples situated around the sacred Pushkar Lake. According to legend, the god Brahma dropped a lotus blossom. On the spot on which it landed on the ground, a spring was created that developed into a lake. Jodhpur, the blue city. In bright sunlight, its sandstone buildings shine out in intense blue. On a rock plateau above the city is a large and impregnable fortress with 36 meter high walls, the Marangar Fort. The power and splendor of those times is highlighted by these remarkable sedan chairs. It was a time of great monarchs on the edge of the Tar Desert. Close to the palace is this region's royal graveyard, Jaswan Tara. Yet the shining white walls of this marble pavilion are more like a palace than a tomb. Chitagar is the oldest fortress in Rajasthan and has a sad story to tell. Once its proud Rajput inhabitants committed communal suicide. The women threw themselves into a fire and the men died honorably in an unwinnable struggle against the Mughal Akbar. They refused to surrender. Since then, the palaces, towers and temples of the former capital of the Rajput realm of Miwa have lain empty. They were never again inhabited. The well-preserved ruined city towers above the modern town and the palace of the Rajputin continues to reflect in the pond that is located in the uppermost section of the fortress. The white temples of Ranakpur are the sanctuaries of the Jains. They are situated in a picturesque valley to the west of the Aravali Mountains, north of Udaipur. At around the same time that Buddhism was introduced to this area, Jainism also arrived. The religion of the country's great hero, Mahavira. 
A forest of stone pillars supports various cupolas that are decorated with complex geometrical patterns and the images of numerous goddesses. The temples were built in around 1500 AD and are one of the finest examples of Indian architecture and stonemasonry. It took 60 years for this, one of the most beautiful temple complexes in Rajasthan, to be completed. It's a place of silence and calm. Set alongside an artificial lake and surrounded by picturesque mountains, Udaipur is one of the most beautiful cities in the Indian province of Rajasthan. But the reason for the establishment of this city had tragic consequences. It was here that Udai Singh retreated when his Chittagar fortress was captured by the Mughal Emperor Akbar. The white marble monuments of the Muir monarchs outside the gates of Udaipur are full of colorful and dramatic history. Rajasthan, the land of the Maharajas in all its splendor. A living fairy tale beneath the desert sky. Agra was once the imposing metropolis of the Mughal monarchs. Today, the city has lost nothing of its medieval atmosphere. Emperor Akbar moved his residence from Delhi to Agra, and the palace city, the Red Fortress, was three generations in construction. A 2.5 kilometer long wall with many bastions surrounds a huge inner courtyard and numerous palace buildings. The ruling monarch and his royal household once held official events in the public audience hall, the 70 meter long Diwan Iyam. Artistic stonemasonry decorates a number of red sandstone arcades. Most of the buildings are of marble. In spite of so much destruction and plundering of the buildings, the amazing wealth of the former moguls is plain to see. Akbar's grandchild, Shah Jahan, added various decorative elements from European palaces to these buildings in order to emphasize his power. From each corner of India, Persia and Central Asia, craftsmen came here to take part in the creation of the palaces and mausoleums. But Jahan's son, Aurangzeb, imprisoned his father in the Red Fort until his death and once again moved his royal residence to Delhi. From his prison cell, Shah Jahan was able to stare at the symbol of his eternal love, to the tomb of his favorite wife, Mumtaz Mahal, who died at an early age. Shining white and majestic building with its large and impressive dome is the final resting place of the Indian Mughal and his beloved wife. The Taj Mahal is one of the most famous buildings in the world. Its perfect proportions and exquisite design depict an image of Islamic paradise. The Taj Mahal was built between 1630 and 1653. The building's Persian character is due to its first architect, Isa Afandi, who originally came from Iran. 
A total of 20,000 workers were responsible for building this truly unique, world-famous mausoleum. Even viewed from the Yamuna River, the Taj Mahal looks like a fairy tale vision of the Thousand and One Nights. The crowded streets of Agra are full of noise and hustle and bustle. The city lies on the banks of the Yamuna River and on the Grand Trunk Road. It became important when Sultan Sikandar Lodi relocated his capital from Delhi to Agra in 1504. The Mughal dynasty followed 22 years later. The monarchy moved once again to Delhi. Agra was plundered on several occasions and was finally conquered by the British in 1803. The Etimad ud Dula mausoleum is a jewel of Mughal architecture that the wife of Shah Jahangir had created for her parents. Her father was a nobleman who had escaped from Persia and became a powerful minister in Jahangir's court. This brought him high honor, albeit following his death. Another tomb was also built on the banks of the Jamuna River for Azal Khan, the Chinese grave, Chini Garauza. A splendid octagonal building adorned with ornate tiles and stone sarcophagi built in memory of the learned court functionary who originated in Persia. Around 500 kilometers southeast of Agra is Saranat, a place that is as sacred for Buddhists as Banaras is for those of the Hindu faith. Sanat is often referred to as the birthplace of Buddhism. It's believed that Buddha delivered his first sermon here following his enlightenment. Since Buddha's sermon in 528 BC, the doctrine extended across large areas of Asia. So the village of Sanat gradually developed. Even today, the remains of this holy place have a certain atmosphere. Because although the buildings are in ruins, Buddhists continue to visit the remains of Sanat's monasteries and temples. After a short journey, we reach Banaras, that is today known as Varanasi. The fascinating hustle and bustle on the Ganja, which is what the Indian people call the River Ganges, begins at dawn. There's a great deal going on. The fastest and most comfortable way to discover the promenade is by boat. Its western banks are fascinating. In addition to ritual bathing, the Ganges is also used for such non-religious ceremonies as the washing of clothes. A magnificent scene. The city's most holy place is the Das Ashwamedha Ghat. The final point on a boat tour on the river Ganges is the Manikanika Ghat in the north. To end one's life here is the highest aim of the Hindus, and it assures them salvation from the eternal circle of birth and death. Varanasi is one of the oldest places in the world and is India's holiest city for Hindus. It is said that it is older than history itself, and even older than tradition. About 50,000 Brahmins live in Varanasi, 
and they have turned the city into a museum of ancient Hindu rites. Here, the past is still very much alive. By traditional boat, we travel to the opposite bank of the holy river Ganges. The picturesque ghats are a popular backdrop for Indian movie productions. Each day, thousands of pilgrims come to the holy center of the city, and the main attraction is not only the ghats, but the river itself. Each evening, traditional prayer ceremonies end the day on the Ganges in the holy city of Banaras, a city full of living religion and ritual ceremonies. Siliguri is a vibrant city located within the Terai Plains of North Bengal. This once peaceful provincial town with its calm streets and shops that once supplied the region's tea pickers with their daily needs has been transformed into an important traffic junction for travelers to the Himalayas. Here, business is booming, despite the scorching heat of the Indian lowlands. The people here are natural merchants. All manner of goods are sold here. And from traditional bicycle rickshaws to modern four-wheel drive vehicles, there's a large choice of transport available too. In winter, numerous Buddhist conferences take place here. The surroundings of Siliguri are well worth a visit. Just a few kilometers away is Kalimandir, a Hindu temple dedicated to the goddess Kali. And also Coronation Bridge, an old but impressive structure that was designed and built by the British in 1930. Close to the bridge is Monkey Point, where many of the mischievous creatures congregate. And at the side of the road, local farmers sell grilled corn cobs. The Sarugara Buddhist monastery is most fascinating. Kalu Rinpoche constructed this huge stupa that contains five noteworthy relics. And in the Iskon temple, the largest in the northeast, Lord Krishna, who have said to have once hidden in the nearby jungle, is worshipped. Siliguri train station is the starting point of one of the most famous train journeys in the world. The porters are waiting for the next passengers. They take their luggage to the train. And the most splendid way to travel from Siliguri to Darjeeling is by way of the Darjeeling Himalaya toy train. The narrow gauge train leaves on time and after a short while stops in Sukhna. This is the last village in the plains before the train enters the jungle. It's still hot and humid, but this will soon change. We ascend the hill relentlessly. For most of the time, the single track rails run parallel with the road. This section contains several bends. There's much difference in altitude to grow accustomed to and the journey lasts for 10 hours. British engineering made this pioneering work possible, an 88 kilometer railroad connection to the mountain world of the Himalayas. Zigzag rails facilitate the train's journey over the steep terrain. The train climbs to an altitude of more than 2,000 meters, negotiates 873 bends and crosses 554 bridges. Chua Siong lies at an altitude of 4,864 feet. It's an early example of a hill town 
one of the many locations once used by the British as their summer retreat. The train continues at a slow pace. It ranges between walking speed and 10 kilometers an hour. Past strolling villagers for whom the small train is such a commonplace sight that they don't seem to notice it. The train has the right of way. We arrive at Sonada Station. In this region settled Bhutia, Tibetans, Lepcha and Nepali. A unique mixture of mountain people that are a fine example of those who have learned to live together in harmony. Finally we arrive at Goom Station. At 7,407 feet, the railroad's highest point. The station looks sad and bleak in the mist. Without the mist, Goom looks totally different and life returns to the monastery and its pretty buildings and lanes. The people here earn their living from the tea plantations. From here, the train makes its descent to Darjeeling, and each bend brings us closer to the famous destination of our journey. Darjeeling, the final destination of our journey. From the hot Siliguri in the lowlands up into the cool mountains at more than 6,890 feet. The region was once part of the independent kingdom of Sikkim until the British arrived. In 1814, when the East India Company came here for the first time, about 200 people lived on the tree-lined slopes. There have been tea plantations here since 1840, this splendid tea growing area has a favorable geographical and climatic location and produces some of the best teas in the world. Each tea garden is organized like a small village. The workers live with their families close to the factories and their welfare services are free. General Lloyd discovered this area and within this small cemetery was eventually laid to rest. A short main street leads to Charasta Square, in which the various noble buildings are the reminder of a golden age. Calcutta, or Kolkata, as it has been known since 2001, is the capital of West Bengal, and also the second largest city in India, a city of contrast that couldn't be more striking. Each morning, hundreds of people come to the Howrah Bridge to bathe on the banks of the Hooghly River, a tributary of the sacred river Ganges. In India, rituals are a part of daily life. Close by is the flower market. While many enjoy their sacred morning bathe, others are already hard at work. In the heart of the city, on the banks of the Hooghly River, is the 400 hectare Maidan Park, the city's green lung. And in its centre, Fort William. Where today there are fountains and pretty flower beds, in the early 18th century there was dense jungle. But not anymore. The southern end of Maidan Park is dominated by Kolkata's main landmark, the Victoria Memorial. A monument to imperial self-assurance, dedicated to the young Queen Victoria, who never ventured to the Indian subcontinent. Close to the Victoria Memorial is the Orient's first Anglican cathedral, St. Paul's a legacy of British colonial rule on the banks of the Gulf of Bengal that has been severely damaged by earthquakes, restored and has subsequently been rebuilt. In BBD Square beats the heart of Kolkata, once the original village of Kolkata in which the East India Company founded a British trading post in the 17th century. 
Ornate colonial buildings surround the square, such as the old government house and the splendid main post office with its large rotunda. The red-coloured Writers' Building was formerly the headquarters of the East India Company. Planting first began in the Botanic Garden in 1786 with an impressive number of palm trees, cacti and ferns. Today, ancient trees flank numerous ponds connected by a network of water channels. Karigat is the oldest pilgrimage destination in the world. Narrow pathways lead to a Shiva temple, along with stalls selling souvenirs and religious offerings. The faithful wait patiently in long rows until it is their turn to enter the temple. In the meantime, they look at images of Shiva and other deities on the walls of the temple. On a boat tour on the Hooghly River, we are reminded of the city's history. And when English merchant Job Charnock founded a trading post in the river village of Sutanuti in 1690. In the following 200 years, this trading center developed into one of the largest cities in the world. A surprising mode of transport in Kolkata, trams. And they've been here since the end of the 19th century. First, they were drawn by horses until electrification was introduced in March of 1902, and they're still in use today. The oldest and largest museum on the Indian subcontinent is the Indian Museum. Its unique and comprehensive exhibits from each epoch and region were first collected in 1814, and since 1875, they've been on display in this splendid building designed by architect Walter Granville. Beyond the high walls of the South Park Street Cemetery is a necropolis of highly unusual design, an oasis of silence. In this city, the Hindu doctrine of a better life after rebirth is for many the only hope that they can cling to. Nevertheless, Kolkata is one of the most fascinating metropolises in the world, and also one in which chaos reigns supreme. Bhubaneswar boasts many magnificent buildings. The capital of the southeastern province of Orissa is well known for its fine Hindu temples. For several years, it's been a popular destination for both tourists and pilgrims. At one time, the ancient Bhubaneswar featured 7,000 sanctuaries and was known as the City of Temples. Indeed, 500 Hindu temples have survived. A masterly demonstration of the filigree art of the local stonemasons is Anatta Vasudev that is also situated in the temple district of Bhubaneswar. And outside the building, strange sculptures and images. The temple market of Bhubaneswar has a long tradition. It's still busy today and very popular with the local people. The temple district is historic ground. Settlements existed here long before the construction of the earliest sanctuaries in the 7th century. The Mukteswara temple dates back to the 10th century. It's a gem of Orissa's temple architecture and is still in use today. This temple town marked a turning point in religious architecture. with splendid landmarks from the high season of Orissa design. Close to the town is Kandagiri Hill, whose natural caves were used by the monks of the Jain religion in the first century BC as a place of meditation.
A few well-preserved reliefs and ornaments adorn the entrances to the cave. They're so low that it's impossible to stand upright. A sign of asceticism. And Bhubaneswar provides the perfect setting for a Hindu temple dance. A number of highly artistic classical dances contain both religious and mythical themes that date back to ancient times. A centuries-old sanctuary towers above the Indian town of Konak that is situated on the Gulf of Bengal. The Surya or Sun Temple lies at the heart of a fascinating temple complex. Surrounded by a park, the Sun Temple is still more than 750 years after it was built, a splendid sight. In addition to it having once been a place of sacrifice, the many sculptures here indicate that the building was once used as a ceremonial assembly hall. The decline of the temple complex began in the 17th century. Muslim invaders plundered this architectural masterpiece and wrought much destruction to each of its sacred buildings. Konark's Surya temple was once attacked by Muslims and some years later fell into decay. Soon the buildings along with their magnificent sculptures and stone ornaments became covered by sand. For several centuries, the temple was lost. The Sun Temple was rediscovered in the 19th century. The province of Orissa is famous for its temple dances, and each year festivals take place during which the most famous dance ensembles perform their most recent dances. Music and dance worship the gods and are also an expression of joie de vivre. The dances are based on ancient texts and originated in the temples. During festivals, the dances are accompanied by the country's finest musicians. The rhythms are highly evocative. Influenced by the kings, the performances became more worldly, although they continued to take place in the temples and were still of a religious nature. The Orissi dance is performed mainly by women. During solo dances, they enjoy choreographic license and are able to respond to the audience. Fine dance excites onlookers. They applaud wildly. In Puri is the holiest place in Orissa, the Jagannath Temple. The city was once a flourishing trading harbor, the antique Dantpur. This huge temple is one of the most visited pilgrim destinations in India, but is forbidden to non-Hindus. It's an impressive sight. The temple contains just about the largest kitchen in the world. Cooking is undertaken according to strict Brahman regulations. Around 25,000 people a day are fed here. In Puri, the Jagannath is worshipped, an image carved out of wood. According to legend, the first image was carved from a piece of wood that had been washed ashore. The temple building is surrounded by high walls and can be entered via several gates. In front of the walls sit busy traders.
the entire town appears to gain its living from masses of pilgrims. Camels provide rides for the tourists and priests hold ceremonies in various parts of the town. Those who have the time can also visit the nearby coast. The southern sandy beach is in stark contrast to the busy temple town. Rich pilgrims can spend their holidays in the resort's many hotels. Salaam Bombay, or Mumbai, as the city has been officially known since 1981. Welcome to India's pulsating megacity. A metropolis of contrasts, with glitter and gloom, violence and religious faith living side by side. An accurate reflection of the true India. Mumbai is one of the largest cities in the world, with a population of around 17 million. The Portuguese who founded Bombahaya, the Good Bay, in 1533, clearly had no idea what it would become. The fishing harbour is a reminder of the city's history. Muslim monarchs once left seven islands to the Portuguese, and the islands were infested by mosquitoes. Charles II of England obtained these islands in 1661 as part of the royal dowry when he married Caterina of Braganza. Thus, they became a possession of the British crown. He had no use for the islands and so rented them for a nominal £10 a year to the East India Company. In 1853, Bombay had its first railroad and the Indian rail network was soon extended. The Victoria Terminus was built, one of the most impressive train stations in the world. Mohator Market, close to the Victoria Terminus, is one of the city's biggest markets. Outside the market there's much hustle and bustle as deliveries come and go. In shady Labanam Alley, there are pretty three-storey high buildings with wooden balconies which Mahatma Gandhi once occupied while in the city. It was here that the Mani Bhavan, or the Gandhi Museum, was established. Whether seen from the pool terrace of a luxury hotel or from the quay, the six-lane marine drive highlights this modern city, the new Mumbai. The Dobi Ghats is the name of the biggest laundrette in the world. Hundreds of Dobies wash the laundry of the entire city beneath the open sky. On the Malabar Hills live the rich and famous of Mumbai, and the Meta Gardens, the Hanging Gardens, are also here, an oasis of tranquility. On Malabar Hill, between the villas of numerous film stars and luxury apartments, is the fascinating Adishwaji Jain Temple. The holy water basin of Banganga Tank is surrounded by a small settlement, hidden between large buildings at the foot of Malabar Hill. Here, the Hindu religion is part of daily life. At the northern end of Marine Drive and within the protected semicircle of Black Bay is a sandy area and promenade, Charpati Beach, a special place. At low tide, the faithful travel to the Haji Ali Moshi across a long dam. Thousands of people squeeze through the rails and beggars along the way. The noble Victoria and Albert Museum is situated next to the entrance of Victoria Gardens, a fine garden complex with greenhouses and adjoining wildlife park. The legendary Taj Mahal Palace with its striking facade and red cupolas is one of the world's most famous hotels. Its proximity to the city's most important landmark, the Gate of India, also adds to the popularity of this luxurious hotel. 
Its monumental triumphal arch is a splendid sight. From here, a ferry boat travels to Elefanta Island. The caves of Elefanta are Hindu sanctuaries that date back to around the 7th century AD and represent the Brahman Renaissance. When in 1534 the Portuguese conquered the island, they transported a stone elephant to Bombay and called the island Elefanta. Incredible India, a remarkable country that has always fascinated travelers by the amazing diversity of its people, culture and landscapes.